You'll find our text for this evening in Exodus chapter 20 and at verse 8. Exodus 20 verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, or thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven, and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It's to be a day of rest and a day devoted to the Lord. In my own lifetime I've seen a huge change in the way that the Sabbath is observed in our society. Seven day working is now common. Many jobs, they work seven days. Shops which used to be closed are now commonly open on Sunday. And sport, of course, Sunday is the great day for sport. Football used to be played on a Saturday, but now so often it's played on a Sunday. There's been a huge change. The people around us don't seem to have any conscience about the Sabbath. They don't seem to think there's anything wrong in doing their pleasure on God's holy day. But sadly, it's not just in the world that we see this change taking place. It's also in the church. It's not surprising that in liberal churches the Sabbath day is barely observed. Liberal churches, of course, take their lead from the world. And looking to the world, the, the, the only demand they'll make is asking if you could come to one service on a Sunday morning. But what's surprising is how evangelical churches and even Reformed churches have changed. How they're no longer observing the day as a holy day unto the Lord. So often you find amongst them that there's just one service on a Sunday. And then for the rest of the day they seem to please themselves, do what they like. How should the Sabbath be kept? Well, we're told here that we are to rest, to rest from our weekly work. Whatever our weekly work is, then we are to, to rest on the Sabbath day. But not just from our weekly work, but we should be resting from all unnecessary work. So often people are cutting their grass on Sabbath or washing their car, doing housework on the Sabbath. Unnecessary work. Now, of course, some work is necessary. The works of necessity and mercy in uh, looking after our families and feeding our families. It's necessary to do that. And looking after our health when there's sickness or ill health. There are certain things which are necessary. And Jesus stressed that. He was correcting the Jews and that they were going too far in their Sabbath commandments, demanding too much of people and what wasn't reasonable. Jesus says there are certain works of necessity and mercy to be done. But it's to be a day of rest. What you can do on Saturday, do it on Saturday. What you can leave till Monday, Leave it till Monday. But it's not just a day of rest. It's also to be kept holy. And what does that mean? How do you keep a day holy? The only way you can make a day holy is by doing holy things 
on that day. The Westminster Confession of Faith explains that we are to spend the Sabbath in the public and private exercises of worship. We're to be worshipping God with God's people in public, yes. We're to worship in our families and privately on our own, reading our Bible, praying, singing praises to God, giving the day to God, reading good books, talking about the things of God, meditating upon the scriptures. A day spent for God. A day that's a foretaste of heaven. We're looking forward to heaven and every week we can spend one day in heavenly activities. God gives to us six days for our work and our pleasures and we are to give one day in the week to God. Well, what I'd like us to do tonight is to look at the reasons why we should keep this day holy. Why keep the Sabbath day holy? And I would like to give 20 reasons, briefly, why we should keep this day holy. Now, the first reason is in some ways the most important of all. It's because God himself set the pattern for us. I would like you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2 and verses 2 and 3 are very important. Genesis 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day... God ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which, we, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So there you see our first great reason for keeping the Sabbath day. God kept it first. And God's saying to us, be like me. God set the pattern. The moral law of God is really an expression of his character. You're not to tell lies because God is the God who cannot lie. You're not to worship other gods because there is only one. and We're to love the Lord our God. You're not to, to kill unjustly because God will never do any injustice. God's law expresses for us his character. Now, in six days, God was working. God could have created the world in one day, but he decided to set a pattern for you and me. So he created the world in six days. And then he rested. And he didn't rest because he was tired. He rested to, to set the pattern for us so that we would have six days of working and one day of rest. One day to be given to God. He set the pattern for us. And we see, therefore, that the Sabbath day was instituted along with the institution of marriage, along with the um, creation mandate to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Along with all these creation ordinances, we find the Sabbath. God gave it at the beginning. Before there were any Jews, before there was an Old Testament, before there was Moses or, a or, or Abraham, or a covenant with Moses and a covenant with Abraham, before there was sin in the world, God gave us a Sabbath. We needed a Sabbath and a sinless paradise. That's the sort of creatures we are. God made us as creatures who need a Sabbath. The word Sabbath means rest. A rest. One day in seven as a rest day. Before there was sin, before the ceremonial law, before Sinai, before the covenants, the Old Testament, God gave the Sabbath. 
and God himself kept the first Sabbath set in a pattern for you and me. Be like God. Keep the Sabbath day a day of rest and a day holy to the Lord. A pattern for the world as long as it remains. That's the first reason. And the second reason is that the Sabbath was not given at Sinai in the form keep the Sabbath day holy but it was given in the form remember remember it's not something which was instituted at Sinai it was there from the beginning remember it it was there always the godly patriarchs they kept the Sabbath Abraham Isaac Jacob Noah before them, Enoch, they kept the Sabbath. You remember when Israel came out of Egypt and they were passing through the desert, coming to Mount Sinai. Before they reached Sinai, God sent the manna to them. And the manna came on six days. And on six days they went out to gather it. And they were told there'd be no manna on the, on the Sabbath because that's a day for no work. Some foolish, wicked, rebellious individuals went out to look for manna on the seventh day, but they didn't find it. The Sabbath was there before Sinai. It was there with regard to the manna. Remember the Sabbath day. And you and I are to remember the Sabbath day. God set it down at the beginning, and we're to remember it, to keep it holy. A third reason is that this commandment was actually spoken by God himself. We read together in chapter 19 of Exodus and chapter 20. These words were spoken by God. God came down upon Mount Sinai and spoke in the ears of all Israel. They were terrified. They were hearing the voice of God. And he spoke every one of these commandments in their ears. How solemn it is. This is different from the ceremonial laws and the civil laws of Israel. The moral law was special. It was to be binding for all time. God spoke it in their ears. And they heard it. God spoke the word. The mighty God of heaven. A fourth reason is that it was written by the finger of God on tablets of stone. It was to be permanent. Other commandments, Moses would write them out on parchment, hearing them from God. But this commandment, God himself wrote it with his finger on those tablets of stone. Tablets of stone so that it will be there forever. To remain, to be durable, to last. God wrote it himself with his finger. Every one of these ten commandments are very important. That's why they were written by the finger of God. And that's why they're so binding upon you and me today. Written by God's finger on tablets of stone. A fifth reason is that we believe in keeping all the other commandments. So why shouldn't we keep the fourth? We believe it's wrong to kill, to commit adultery, to steal, to tell lies, to covet, to have idols. So why not the Sabbath day? It's there in amongst the ten. It's number four. And it should be kept. Just as we believe the other nine should be kept. The moral law is binding forever upon us. It's an expression of God's character. And we are to keep it always. A sixth reason arises from the second giving 
of the Ten Commandments in Deuteronomy chapter 5 verses 14 and 15. There when Israel had come to the end of their journey through the wilderness, God gave them the Ten Commandments again. Deuteronomy 5 verses 14 and 15. The interesting thing is that there's an addition there with regard to the fourth commandment. God says, remember you were slaves in the land of Egypt. You were servants. The fourth commandment is so important for those who have hard work, heavy jobs, demanding jobs. It's so important for us, so vitally important for us to have a day of rest. Remember how miserable you were in Egypt, day after day, seven days a week, 52 weeks in the year, slaves. Remember the Sabbath day to rest, to keep it holy. You were slaves. You should particularly value this day that gives you rest in the midst of all your work. A seventh reason is that breaking the Sabbath day is seen as very serious by God. We're told in Numbers chapter 15 verses 32 to 36 about a man who broke the Sabbath. He went out gathering sticks to make a fire on the Sabbath. Now there had been a command to the Israelites, Exodus 35 verse 3, that they were not to kindle a fire on the Sabbath. In these days, kindling a fire was obviously something that involved a huge amount of labour. You had to gather sticks and then somehow you didn't have matches or fire lighters or whatever. You had to somehow or other get a fire going, rubbing sticks together or whatever it was. It was an onerous occupation and therefore it was condemned. Now we're told about this man, Numbers 15, who was out gathering sticks on the Sabbath and God told Moses that he should be stoned to death. That's serious. Capital punishment for breaking the Sabbath day. God doesn't view breaches of the Sabbath lightly. He sees it as something very serious. And we are to view it as serious too and to take these commandments to heart and to seek to obey them. An eighth reason is the promised blessings that there are in keeping the Sabbath. Isaiah 58 verses 13 and 14 are very interesting. God says there, turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight the holy of the Lord and honourable, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and I will feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. There's a promise. Call the Sabbath a delight. Enjoy it. Rejoice in it. Delight in it. Turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from breaking it and transgressing it, and sinning against God by doing that, and if you call the Sabbath a delight and delight in it, God promises, I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and I will feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. I will bless you. I will prosper you if you keep the Sabbath. Try me. See for yourselves. There's blessing in keeping the Sabbath day. A ninth reason for keeping the Sabbath is that it is a covenant sign or mark of God's people. We have this in Exodus 31 verses 13 to 17. There we're told that the Sabbath is a sign of the covenant and it marks out God's people as different. The Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Edomites, the Moabites, they had forgotten the Sabbath. They had given up the Sabbath. 
But Israel remembered the Sabbath, and by remembering the Sabbath, they showed themselves to be the people of God. They were different. They were God's holy people, God's covenant people, God's special nation. It's a covenant sign. We find the same thing in Ezekiel chapter 20 and verses 12 and 20. God again challenges Israel to remember the Sabbath. And still today, the Sabbath marks you, and your keeping of the Sabbath marks you as different from your neighbors. Sadly, our society, our country, which used to be a Christian country, has become so secular and departed from Christian observances. And so the people around us show no respect for the Sabbath. They don't think about it. It doesn't even bother their conscience in any way. And you and I are to show that we're God's people. We believe in keeping the Sabbath day holy. We're not ashamed of it. It's one of the things that mark us out as the people of God. A tenth reason is that breaking the Sabbath was one of the reasons that sent the Jews into the exile in Babylon. You remember how Nebuchadnezzar came up, burnt the temple, destroyed Jerusalem, and carried away the Jews, exiles, captives, slaves to Babylon. And one of the reasons, we're told, was neglect of the Sabbath. Nehemiah chapter 13, verses 15 to 22. This was after they had returned from the exile, the temple had been built again, and the walls of Jerusalem had been built, and Nehemiah the governor finds that there's some people treading wine presses on the Sabbath, carrying burdens on the Sabbath, men of Tyre coming and selling their fish in Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And he says, God brought evil on this city for this very reason. God brought the captivity to the Jews because of their desecrating the Sabbath. God punished Israel long ago for their breaking of the Sabbath. God loves the Sabbath day, and when it's broken, God will punish those who break it. There's a price to be paid. And then when we come to the teaching of Jesus, an eleventh reason, Jesus says that he did not come to destroy the law and the prophets, but to fulfill. Matthew 5, verses 17 to 20. Till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass. Whosoever shall break one of these least commandments and teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall not enter into the kingdom. Jesus is here talking about living godly lives, and he says, you've got to keep the commandments. Anyone who breaks even the least commandment, they will suffer for it. They are to be kept. All God's commandments are to be loved and observed. Jesus didn't come to destroy the law and the prophets. He came to fulfill. He came to establish. <coughs> A twelfth reason. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14 verse 15. What are my commandments? Well, who was the one who appeared on Mount Sinai? It was the Word of God, the angel of the Lord, the second person of the Trinity. He is the spokesman for the Trinity. He is the one who came down on Mount Sinai. He is the one who said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Jesus. And now Jesus says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Do you love Christ? Show it by keeping the Sabbath day holy. A thirteenth reason is that Jesus says 
the Sabbath was made for man, for man's benefit. Mark 2, 27. Now the Jews were going to extremes and they were making the Sabbath more important than man. And that's wrong. They were forbidding healing on the Sabbath when Jesus would heal um, the impotent man in the temple or whatever. Um, or when Jesus' disciples were hungry and they were taking ears of corn, rubbing them in their hands to eat them. They were criticizing Jesus for these works of necessity and mercy. But Jesus says, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath's not imp more important than man, but the Sabbath is made for man. Now, when people break the Sabbath, they say, we know better than God. God made the Sabbath for man for his benefit, but we don't think it's for his benefit at all. God knows us. God made us. And when God made us, he made us such that we benefit from a Sabbath day. The Sabbath day was made for man, therefore keep it. God knows it's for your good. For your good for your body and your mind, rest from work. Good for your soul, holy resting in the Lord. A fourteenth reason is that Jesus claims the Sabbath for himself. Mark 2.28 He says, Therefore the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the Lord's day. It belongs to the Lord. It's his day. We are to give it to him. To give him the Lord's day. The Old Testament Sabbaths were replaced in the New Testament by the Lord's Day. In the Old Testament, the greatest work that was done up till then was the work of creation. God worked for six days and then rested. And right down through the Old Testament, the seventh day Sabbath was observed. And then Christ comes along, and you remember how Christ observed the Sabbath himself. He's the only one that ever kept the Sabbath perfectly. He kept it perfectly. He never broke the Sabbath in any way. And then he died. He died on a Friday afternoon. And he rested in the grave on the Sabbath. And then he rose the first day of the week. And that first day of the week then was the time when he had completed a greater work than creation. Redemption is a far greater work than creation. And so, on that first day of the week, we are to rest in Christ, and particularly to meditate upon and rejoice in the magnificent work that Christ did. The tremendous work he did on the cross for us. We are to rest in the Lord and to rejoice in what he has done for us. We notice how this day was observed the first day of the week from then on. You see that in that uh, Christ's resurrection appearances were on the first day of the week, the day rose and then a week later Again, the first day of the week, he appeared to the disciples. You remember how the Holy Spirit came down on the day of Pentecost, the first day of the week? Think, too, of uh, the Apostle Paul. You remember how he came to Troas, and he waited seven days until the gathering of the Lord's people on the first day of the week. And then he preached, Acts 20, he preached, and he celebrated the sacrament of communion, the Lord's Supper, that first day of the week, and then left very early the next morning in his journey to Jerusalem. He waited till the Sabbath, the Christian Sabbath, the first day of the week, Acts 20. You remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, how he said, 
that they were to lay aside an offering for the poor Jews in Jerusalem on the first day of the week, when they would gather together to worship God and to keep the Christian Sabbath. Revelation chapter 1 tells us how John on the island of Patmos was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. The Lord's day. So it's not as some people say, it wasn't Constantine or someone else like that at a much later date who said we'll change from the last day of the week to the first day of the week for the Christian Sabbath. No, it changed immediately with Christ's resurrection and the New Testament church observed the first day of the week from then on as the Christian Sabbath. It's the Lord's day, a day to be given to the Lord himself. Then, 15th. It's interesting that Jesus, when he tells his disciples about the destruction of Jerusalem and how the Romans will come and they will surround Jerusalem and when that happens, they're to flee. The Christians were to flee and indeed they did flee. They fled to Pella and they didn't suffer in the destruction of Jerusalem the way the Jews did. But Jesus said, pray that your flight be not in the winter or on the Sabbath day. Something that was going to happen 40 years after his death. Pray that your flight be not on the Sabbath. Not in the winter because of the hardships that that would involve for them. But not on the Sabbath because the Sabbath is God's day. It's to be a blessed day. A day for their good and a day for their souls. So there Jesus was recognizing that the Sabbath would be observed 40 years after his own resurrection. And then when we come, 16, when we come to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9, there remaineth therefore a rest unto the people of God. The word that's used there in the Bible is a sabbatismus. There remaineth therefore a Sabbath for the people of God. The Sabbath remains and we rejoice in the Sabbath. And every week we're to rejoice in the Sabbath. And we're looked to look forward to the eternal Sabbath that awaits for the people of God. And those who don't delight in the Sabbath today, there's no chance of them being in heaven because they would be so bored in heaven. They would make heaven into hell. The Sabbath is for those who are born again, who delight in the Lord Jesus Christ and rejoice in keeping the day holy. There remaineth therefore a Sabbath for the people of God. Hebrews 4 verse 9. 17. We give a tithe of our money to the Lord. We see that as our duty. So it's our duty to give a tithe of our time to the Lord. It's rather interesting if you take 24 hours in a day and multiply it by seven, seven days in the week, that makes 168 hours. And you take a tithe of your 168 hours, that gives 16.8 hours. A working day or a, a day when you're up and about, 16 hour day. You're to give a tithe of your time to the Lord, just as you give a tithe of your money. 18. Our lives are very busy with work and family, entertainments, phones, computers, screens, all the rest of it. We need a Sabbath, a Sabbath of rest, a Sabbath of rest from our, for our bodies, a Sabbath of rest for our minds, rest from our computers and our screens and all the rest of it, and particularly for resting in God, for the good of our souls. If our life is seven days a week of the same thing, 52 weeks in the year, the good seed of the gospel will be choked, just like in the parable of the sower, 
the thorns choke the good seed. We need, we need for our bodies and minds to rest. And why is there so much mental illness in the world today? So much of it because people are stressed out. They need a rest. But especially we need it for the good of our souls. 19. The best Christians have always kept the Sabbath. The Puritans, the godly Puritans, they laid great emphasis upon the Sabbath. Our Scottish covenanters, our, our Scottish Christian fathers, they loved the Sabbath and valued it. Godly men like Robert Murray McChain, how he valued the Sabbath. There's a story, a story told of his journey to the Holy Land where there were some, he was journeying up to Jerusalem and um, the Arabs who were leading him up to Jerusalem wanted to keep on going on, on the Sabbath day. There was no way he was going to waste his Sabbath traveling. He got off uh, and sat under a tree or a bush and he said, I'm not moving from here. I love my Sabbaths. I value my Sabbaths and I'm not going to spend them traveling. The best Christians have always kept the Sabbath. Let us be like them. And then finally, 20. The loss of the Sabbath is due to a spiritual falling away. A carelessness, a worldliness that has come over the church, particularly in our Western society. We become so worldly, so careless, so spiritually careless. We shouldn't see it as something good, but remember the Sabbath day. Repent and remember. Return to observing the Sabbath. Remember the, the little rhyme that used to be told, a Sabbath well spent brings a week of content and strength for the toils of tomorrow. But a Sabbath profaned, whate'er may be gained, is a certain forerunner. Of sorrow. The Lord kept the first Sabbath and he blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. The Sabbath is a blessed day. How can a day be blessed? A day can only be blessed when it blesses you. And the Sabbath day is a blessed day for God's people. There's more people converted on the Sabbath day than on any other day of the week. But not just that. God's people are blessed and fed and edified on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is our shopping day. Yes, we're to use it for shopping. Shopping for our souls. The market day of the soul, as the Puritans used to call it. We come, we come to church on the Sabbath to get food for our souls. We're reading good books on the Sabbath in order to feed our souls. We're, we're concerned to benefit from the Sabbath. What a blessing it is to have a Sabbath day. And what a curse it is on our society to neglect the Sabbath. So Christian friends, value the Sabbath day. Keep it and don't let anyone take it from you. And if you don't enjoy the Sabbath day, and if the Sabbath day is not to you the best day of the week, it's time you repented. It's time you were converted. Because if the Sabbath day is not the best day of the week for you, you're in the gall of bitterness and in the bondage of iniquity. You're unconverted. You need to be saved. You need to be born again. You need to have a new nature given to you. You need to have the Holy Spirit in your hearts so that you will rejoice in the Lord always and again rejoice and delight in the things of God. It's time to repent and be converted and cry to the Lord for mercy to make you into a Christian so that you will enjoy the Sabbath and then you can look forward with confidence when you die, to spending your Sabbath day, your eternal Sabbath day in heaven. Let's pray.